talking about saying hello to folks on the oh, oh, yeah. So ask the folks out there, there's background noise, but how is our voice? Yeah, can we, are we muffled? Can we hear us okay? We kill the background noise and we hear us. Ken, the clock is outside. Oh, it's outside. You did that. expensive of the ones that, that I bought for our, our comparison today. Uh, a New Zealand Pinot Noir. Now this is going to be an experiment for me because I have to say that I've never really gotten behind New Zealand Pinot Noir, not because uh, I don't like it, I just don't know anything about it. So I'm excited about that. Because the is so damn good. Right. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, no, it's <laughs> true. I can only buy New Zealand South Wales. Uh, and then we decided uh, the West Coast, we have Alexander Valley, Alexander Vineyards from um, Oregon, and then of course we all recognize the brand of Robert Mondavi, and this is a Caneros uh, Pinot Noir. But most importantly, we are going to compare it one on one with Hermit Woods Red Scare. Uh, that's that's the plan. So we're going to have Red Scare side by side with each one of these, and talk about our impressions about what it's like in comparison as we go through. I will say by the time we get to this glass, we may not be as coherent. Just <laughs> <laughs> so that's the plan. Everybody's welcome to join us out there. Grab a glass of Pinot Noir, and um, yeah, it's a it's a wonderful grape, and um, this is great opportunity to compare and talk about it. To tell this is this is not a Burgundy, of course. This is not a Pinot Noir. This is oh, this is a, our. It's in a bottle, just like it, it is. It is in a in a Burgundy bottle, but it's not the same as these wines, which are made out of Pinot Noir grapes. This doesn't have any grape in it at all. It's a type of mead called a mellow mel. It's fruit with honey that have been fermented. Fermented completely dry, like most Pinot Noirs, and then barrel aged, like most Pinot Noirs. So it um, ends up having some body and flavor somewhat reminiscent of a Pinot, even though it's not a Pinot Noir based wine. So it's kind of fun to compare and contrast them. We're not trying to make a Pinot Noir out of honey and fruit. We're trying to see what honey and fruit that grows really well in New England actually brings to the glass when you handle it as you would a, a point grape. I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that, Ken, because one of the things that's really important, and we, we try and make this distinction as often as, we, often as we can, clearly we're making wines that are classically styled after European style wines, like a Pinot or a Burgundy, or, I mean a Bordeaux or a Rhone or, or some, some great varietal that you're familiar with. But we're by no means trying to create a great wine. We're not trying to copy a great wine. Right. We're trying to create a wine that, that's really about the terroir that here is, exists here in our part of the world. But what's important about wines is that they, uh, for us, and when we're drinking wines, are, are things like how the wine takes, how it feels in your mouth, how complex the wine is, how the wine pairs well with food, um, these are characteristics that we look for in a well-made wine, regardless of what it's made of. Right. And so we decided it's important to see if our wine will hold up in some of those characteristics to some of the other wines that we like that are made from grapes. Right. 
I'm not trying to suggest this is a grape wine or it should be like a grape wine. It should be its own thing. Yeah. And it is. It's very distinct. And, it's, and it's, it's lovely that way. But characteristically, it does embody some of the stylistic characteristics of a Pinot. Yeah. Yeah. So where do you suggest we start, Chuck? Well, so what time do you want to start at? Or? You know, it's funny. In, in early on, when we got into this process, um, I was uh, laid off from being an airline pilot. I worked for an importer uh, named Gus, who's uh, the importer great. Yeah, he's still around. He imports uh, great wines from Argentina and Chile. Yeah, Argentina, Chile, Uruguay, 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 South America, and um, so that really was the beginning of my education in South American wines. And we had a big wine from from Chile. And I got to drink it a lot. So that enabled me to really begin to understand sort of the, there, to me, there's kind of a flavor profile, particularly at this price point for, point for uh, Chilean wines. There's a kind of a, a, a vegetal earthiness, maybe a little bit of. So let's, pepper. Go, let's start there. But I, I would expect it to be a bit lighter. I, I don't think this is one of Gus's, and I didn't really look, but um, I expect it to be a little bit lighter. It's a one on the far left. And uh, one thing that's great about the Chilean wines is the price point is always, always fantastic. Um, and the wine quality is awesome. Casa Blanca. So just, just a, another plug out there, uh, if you did catch the first time, Gus Morales, the imported grape. And if you go to the uh, liquor store, um, his wines are fairly well represented around New Hampshire, especially southern New Hampshire. So uh, if you want to try some really wonderful South American wines, you should definitely look up uh, the imported grape and uh, see what they're, they're offering. I believe they have a website, and you can see what brands they carry. So, all right. So let's uh, let's see what we got here. Pinot Noir is one of those wonderful grapes when they when they grow in an environment that's really enjoyable. That's they exactly can really exactly. express themselves beautifully. There's a what's the year of this? It is a little darker. This is 17, which is the same as the Red Sea, right? So this is 17 from the Southern Hemisphere. So that's half a year again older than a 17 from our hemisphere. Their harvest is earlier that year. That's remarkable similarities on the nose. Yeah. It's it's really rich. I'm I'm, I'm impressed with the nose. It's, it's really quite fantastic. Mm. It's totally different aromatics. The Red Scare has got this very particular aromatic to me a lot of the black raspberry and the honey and the honey yeah, yeah that's right that come together and they create this floral violet uh, sort mm -hmm. of thing but you yeah. still have that earthy undertone from the those secondary aromas from the barrels and that's what that's what I say you know some of those characteristics that are coming out of this um, are are underlying in the red scare I'm getting some of that bright fruitiness that's yeah, that you sort get. Of the, it's sort of that cherry, rather yeah, berry mm -hmm. kind of. They're both on this cherry berry kind of spectrum. Wolfgang has joined us from my. This uh, reminds East. me of some, some, yeah, they, some Oh, mm -hmm. so because it's got the thick light. Yeah. It's a little bit fruitier. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. That's really nice one, though. Yeah. It's very smooth. And the very... point was not bad on that? No, hold on a second. It was uh, $15. Yeah, fish. Wow. Yeah, reasonable. What's the alcohol? Um, you know, all stainless steel, no doubt. Just fresh. It's sort of, sort of probably made Beaujolais. Thirteen percent. Like, so. not, well, not really Beaujolais, but made to be not aged, to, to be consumed within a few years. Um, not oak barrel aged. Just, it's just the fruit. It doesn't. It, you get a little bit of the tannins in the, in the end, but it's not. It's more acidic, and what I don't get, and I don't find it here, is what I, if, if I was blind tasting, I would not have recognized this as, uh, as Chilean. I don't get any yeah. of the, the sort yeah. of Chilean character that I, that I might have expected. The um, <laughs> red scare has got a little bit more going on in the mid palate to me. Yeah, it's richer. It's got a, a sort of more complex, interesting flavors that progress from the aroma first sip to the finish. The Chilean is very well integrated. Mm -hmm. It is what it is. The yeah. aroma, the flavor, the finish are all a, a very nice chord of, of music. But this has a couple of other notes that are speckled in there. It's a little bigger. It's a little bigger. It fills your, fills your mouth up yeah. a little more. It, it, uh, 
Yeah, but I think, I think it has a little more linger. It lasts, yeah, it goes a little longer. I, I still have some spice in my mouth. Yeah. I'm not so there's a there's a brightness too, and, a, and again, this is what, what I really get excited about. We're talking about the red scare in five years or ten years. Right. But there's just just a just a hint of you know that acidity in the back. Yep. It sort of lingers. That acidity is part of what lingers in your mouth. And as that rounds out, as we've experienced from some of our other older vintages of Red Scare, right. that tends to soften and the fruit comes out even more. Yeah. And this yeah. being, I think, your best Red Scare ever uh, is, is really going to shine you know, as, as the years go on. Yeah. So, yeah. But it's, these are remarkably similar. This was a, this was a good pick. It's, I think it's a nice, you know, medium weight red wine. Yeah. 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 Right. Similar you know, alcohol. This, you're at 13 percent with yours, yeah. right? Yeah. I, I don't know. Right on, right on the moment. All right, now, we tried this a few weeks we, ago. We did, we had this in one of our other same, tastings. Same one. We had it last two weeks ago, right? Two two weeks weeks ago. Ago. That's right. right. So that'll be good to see this in the lineup. Because not only do we want to compare this to Red Scare, but we want to compare it to the other Pinots as well. So this is a French, it's Burgundy. And, uh, Louis Jadot, uh, what year is this? This is also a 17. Widely available in the liquor store, too. Louis Jadot is very well represented yep. here in the States. So similar sorts of colors and clarity. You know, a, a big Cabernet, a big Bordeaux blend, a big Merlot will be a little darker, uh, heavier in color, a little darker, not as light and as translucent as a Pinot is. Mm. Not, it doesn't have the same richness on oh, the nose. No, there's not. There's nothing there in the glass compared to the last yeah, one. Yeah, no, it's, it's much maybe, calmer. Maybe these a few minutes to open up. Yeah. It's swirling around. It's a, yeah, it's, it's a, a nice, nice it's a open. nice smell. What you do get yeah. is, is very pleasant. Yeah, I, I would say for me this is a different experience than the, the Chilean yeah. wine as a matter of being fruit forward. This is much richer in the mid palate, some acidity. My mouth is watering, but it's also drying out in the aftertaste. So I would say that this has uh, got uh, much more, uh, more tannins in it, and the fruit hasn't really evolved yet in it, or it's just more so. And it, I think it has a steaminess in the finish. I think this is, yeah, it's got all of those things, which is like that old world French, yeah. a little more austere, a little yeah. drier. Yeah. Uh, probably. You know, got some barrel time to it that's that's adding that that's, that tannic grip. But I think it, I think it needs a little time to open up. Yeah, to get the glass. I found it in the finish. I, I, I think this is going to sound too harsh, but almost hollow the, the, in the in the back. It just seemed just wasn't there. It wasn't where it yeah. needed to be in the finish. It just seemed like it was it was a little thin or hollow. And and I and I say. Maybe that's not the right word because it's it's it drinks very nice and, and I, I, I think hollow is a little harsh. But that, I was trying to figure out how to describe. How to no, I get that because you go back to the red scare, mm -hmm. and that finish stays stronger. The, the fruit carries through even with the grippiness that emerges after you swallow. Right. Whereas with that that French Pinot, nice nose, nice flavors, and then when you get to the end and you're you're Finishing it off, you get that dryness that appears, but all fruits go. Right, right. That's exactly you know, the flavor. Right. Yes, that's why hollow came to mind. Yeah, so, so that something was missing. Yeah, it, it loses that at the end. Yeah. Very interesting. <laughs> so, uh, the peanut gallery is, is watching us. Oh, uh, great. Our friend Wolfgang has, is making some interesting comments. Uh, uh, Mike Gengris is, is uh, watching us as well. Excellent. To which uh, they say uh, hello and. Um, the Wolfgang made a snarky remark about how many glasses we need to drink wine, but we are wine professionals, Wolfgang. Uh, and then Mike Jengris is, is uh, watching, and so we should be the first vineyard to invent masks through which you can drink wine. Yeah. We I were was talking noticing, about that the other day. I was noticing that I can actually smell this wine through the mask. You can? Yeah. Well, you've had your mask on here for a while. That yeah. might help. I have, might have residual wine things in my nose. <laughs> Right, exactly. If this was a class of COVID-19, would I be able to smell it? Oh, lovely. <laughs> I, 
Uh, to speak to the number of glasses on the table, um, one of the things, if you ever do a, a, a tasting of wine, the most important way to really appreciate um, comparing wines is to do it side by side. So we're going to have- the shade, same size shape glass. Exactly, yeah. absolutely, that's critical, actually. And uh, so once we're done pouring all of these wines, and there's a little bit of wine in each glass, we'll have the opportunity to go back and, and do an action yeah, side by side yeah. of each one. So yeah. it's important to separate them. Plus we don't have to worry about rinsing each glass in between. Each wine is going to be in its own glass with its, without any risk of anything else in there. Exactly. All right, so here we go. We're going down under. Down, down under. under. New Zealand. New Zealand. I'm excited about this. I, I don't know how New Zealand Pinot Noir. I don't think I have either. You know, that's funny. I, I, we must have at some point. It's just that those brain cells were diminished by other wine experiences. Now you got to keep it all your glasses lined up? Yes. yes. Look at the color difference. Dark? Yeah. Much it's darker. Much darker. Wow. It has a darker, purpler, almost black tinge to it. That's a Pinot. Yeah. <laughs> Much more like the Chilean one. Or the yeah, it's on the, on the nose for sure. It's got that yeah, earthiness nice. on the very nose. Nice. Not as, it's more earthy, less fruity though. I don't, I think more earth, less fruity. Chilean yeah. had the fruitiest. And less alcohol, which is nice. Or better integration of the alcohol. It what year? This, is, this has some color. This has some brick color to it. This is this this, this seems like it might be a little older. I think a little older, Bob. Two years older. This is 2015. Oh, okay. Good catch there. Did everybody catch that? So younger red wines, those that have just been in the bottle a year or two, will typically have their bright red color all the way out to the thin edges of it. As a wine matures, a red wine matures, it, it, it oxidizes a bit and, and brings on a little bit more of an orange character. And you see that most clearly when you have a white sheet of paper or a light colored background and you tip the glass so you have a real thinning of the wine and you can see that, that reduction of the color. Yep. A wine that's 15 or 20 years old can be fairly brick colored throughout. Yep. So I like the aromatics of, of this. The, 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 the mid body is fairly light, like as a Pinot Noir, I guess, should be. Um, the finish, I get a lot of oak. I don't know. You're the you're the oak sensor here, but for me, I've got this pasty dryness on my teeth right now that I didn't get from the other the other wines, and I certainly I don't get that perception of oak from from the Red Scare either. So I would I would submit that this is not only older, and it's, it's also been processed um, longer, you know, longer. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. It could be. It's. I think it's still well integrated. I don't yeah. find it offensive or overly oaked. To no, me. no. It's, I think it's, it's just different. It's part of the character. It's, it's leaning more towards the old world French. The, the Jadot had more of that oaky, yeah, yeah dry dry to it. Yeah, it's. I think it's much more aligned with the Jadot. The fruit is softer. The fruit is the fruit is softer. As, mm -hmm. as in your face, and some of the other ones. And the, uh, the other thing is the acidity compares closely with the Red Scare. You get that, there's a bright acidity in the finish of this one that still remains, I find. Just, just a hint. Not quite, I think the Red Scare's probably got more of it. Of course, the Red Scare's three years or two years younger. Yeah. I love the smell of this one. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, it's not a Pinot at all, but I just, I love the smell of this. That black raspberry is really, with the honey, really lovely. You know, it's funny, as I go back to the Red Scare, I have some of the residual oakiness from the the, the other wine, and it, it actually changes what the Red Scare tastes like to me. That's what's gonna happen as we go yeah. through this. All these wines are gonna taste different. When we have them side by side, smell them side by side, yeah. this Red Scare now seems a little bit more old world. I'm getting a bigger, drier finish to it than I did earlier. That's funny. It's but such a joy to chase these wines together like this, and and along with Red Scare. It's such a learning experience. And it, 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 you know, we, we get so involved in the day to day things that we do to to keep the winery going, and you know, you, sometimes you lose touch with with what you're doing, right. what you're making, what you're right. creating, and so to get back to it every now and then. No, I think you know we I think we commented about this before an earlier one that. Um, 
you know, we got really enthusiastic about wine. It really propelled us into this, into this, this project, this business, because of getting together every month and doing our tastings and us getting together and making wine and then sampling it and trying it. It's been so nice to come back to them. Yeah. You know, I'll drink a bottle of Red Scare every now and again, but I've never, I haven't done this yeah. in years. Right. And this is really critical yeah. to, to understanding the wines, to see where we're going. It helps us shape ideas about what our wines are like when customers come in and they're not accustomed to our wine. They, they see a wine that says, you know, dark berries and honey. And they go, oh, great, it's a sweet fruit wine. Right. And we said, hold on, it's not a sweet fruit wine. This is more like Pinot Noir. I don't what do you mean it's more like Pinot Noir? Well, it has the body, character, it's its own unique flavors and character, but it's an expression of what wines that are produced out of the fruit that grows around here, done in the style and character of a red wine, end up tasting like. Yeah. So it's really, it's really a great process. All right, Alexander Bell. What is the alcohol in this glass? It's the red. Oh, let's put that up. 13.5. 13.5. Which I think is, you're going to find Pinots tend to be on the lower end of the alcohol scale. But, yeah. uh, probably when you get to California, though, it might be up a, up a bit. <laughs> we'll know in a minute. We'll see. This one is, uh, this is a little younger, too. This is an 18. And, um, is that the California one? This is the California, the Alexander. I don't see the ABV on the Alexander's. Um, yeah, it seems to be that the Pinot Noir grape is becoming uh, um, better expressed in a cooler climate. In California, not only being on fire, but it's getting too warm to be a great Pinot. Just that latitude, yeah, it's too far south now. It's too far it's south. Too it hot. used to be spot on, but now Oregon, Washington, uh, the grape is migrating north, and I think, at least in my humble opinion, the, I like the, the, the wines from Oregon um, better than I do, for the most part, the California. This is better. Sonoma. Sonoma County. Oh, this also? Is it? Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. Well, there we go. Russian River. Oh, it's Russian River. Oh, I do like Russian River. That's right. You drink champagne from there all the time. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. Ah, uh, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, it's fascinating. I can't believe there's not an ABV on it. And I couldn't find one. Isn't you, there, you couldn't find it either? No. Isn't that isn't that the law? It is the law. Isn't it required? What's what going on here? They, they got they got labeled somewhere. Somewhere. They got labeled a little without it. Are you keeping track of your glasses somehow? Yeah. This is red skirt. <laughs> <laughs> Just keep track of red skirt. <laughs> So, I oh, can't find that's an interesting. ABV on this. Does anybody out there in the world know what the ABV is on an Alexander Valley Vintage 2018 Pinot Noir? Please let us know, because it's not labeled on the bottle. This is a this is a fruitier, this is a different terroir by far, a different ABA, clearly. If you're not familiar with the Russian River, this is one of the most enjoyable places to go wine tasting mm -hmm. in California. It's, it's uh, sort of between the coast and and Napa. It's it's maybe a little bit north of Napa, and uh, and then the Russian River flows out to the to the ocean, and it's this beautiful windy little road that takes you through the through the, the mountains, the the the, uh, the mountain range, the coastal range, and along the way are probably at this point hundreds of vineyards surrounding the whole Russian River Valley. And it's, it's a cooler climate because they have uh, cool air coming in from the ocean. And, uh, and so they can grow Pinot there. It's not as hot as the Inner Valley is like Napa. But it's absolutely a beautiful wine. place to visit. Nice one. Yeah. But this is, this is impact wine. Yeah, too. This is got this is more sort of a big wine. Yeah. yeah, this is more it's California. Like what California, what Napa is all about. It's like Robert Parker has instilled that in everybody. Just the wine with as much intensity as you possibly can. Yeah. It's approaching fruit bomb. <laughs> it's not the same. <laughs> for, for a Pinot, yeah. you know. It's, it's a, definitely it's much, much, much bigger. Oak has an energy and 
fruit on the, I mean, it's it's a nice one. I have to say, it's very it has a, it has a soft mouth feel that I like. That's it's young, it's young really though for its for its character, for its mm -hmm. potential. I think this is one that you really want to give it a few more years in the bottle. Yeah, and it's completely completely a different animal to me from from Red Scare. Different fruit, different. I mean, it it sort of goes off the spectrum. In, in, in fruit. I'm going to go back to the Chilean right now. No, oh, that's interesting. Yeah, this that doesn't compare to the Red Scare at all. No, no, it's a different, no. it's a different planet. Mm -hmm. I would say only maybe in mouthfeel are the Red Scare and the Alexander Russian River Valley um, Pinot Noir in the same, same ballpark. But the flavor profile is different. Mm -hmm. And the finish, I mean, I, you know, there's, there's so much dry tannins in the finish of that for me that you know, that would be a, a big, big steak one. Yeah, yep, definitely. And I agree, Chuck. Go back to the Chilean for a moment. Yeah, the first one? Interesting. Yeah, that's the first one. The aroma is just, it got that's this real so like a earthy yeah. to it's it. It's more like Provence. This is yeah, it's very it's Southern French. There may even be a little touch of bread in there. Uh, some other say, yeah. There's a little funk in there that I didn't get before. Yeah, it tastes completely different to me. Oh. Hmm. It's changed a lot. It's yeah. losing some of the fruit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's lost a lot of the fruit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. And you do get a smokiness. That's dried out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but there's a smokiness now to me. That's fascinating. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the good thing about this, when it's so complex, I mean, this is just a fermenting crate, and it's so incredibly complex. It just changes all the time. You have to keep trying more and more. Well, that's yeah, true. And also, I just thought of it. What just happened was is that you followed this big, jammy, juicy, heavy California rat fino with what is clearly, as we've stated, more delicate. So we, we say it lost all its fruit. Well, it lost its fruit compared, compared to this. Right, right. So maybe it didn't lose as much fruit as we think, right. but we're just we're just trying to like apples and oranges. We're yeah, not, we're not. We just got adjusted. We adjusted our taste buds to a different. Jesus, I hope you paid an extra ten bucks for the bottle. Uh, for it bucks. is Robert Mondavi. <laughs> oh, yeah. I sell the wine before it's time. Is that Mondavi? Maya and I had a bottle of wine the other day. This bottle weighed like eight pounds <laughs> when it was empty. It was just ridiculous. Look at this. Mm. Wow! <laughs> I had I had a I had a little line like that the other day as well. It's really kind of funny. I want a big heavy ball. I want to have tequila. In it. So this is not you know this other one is a little bit little. No, no, it's still big, rich, full color. It's still a little heavier. So here we go, Napa Valley. Napa Valley versus Red Scare. Mondavi versus seen by Mondavi in the late 50s as a place that has perfect climate for growing Bordeaux varietals, mm -hmm. Cabernet, Chardonnay, and and um, Merlot and all the other grapes. And here we are with Pinot. That is not what I think of as a Pinot. It smells like a Pinot though. It's more yeah, it on the like a Pinot. it's more on the French style uh, mm. for me. Well, that smells really nice. It smells very rich. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's, to me, this is very Burgundian, shockingly. Thirteen five again. So the way they do that, of course, is to pick those slopes, those places that don't get too much. Higher elevation, cooler. higher elevation, cooler night, and then to to have that balance of fermentable sugars, which gives you that alcohol level, and nice bright acidity, you may pick those berries, those grapes, a little before perfect phenolic ripeness. So you, you miss out, and you may get some of those young vegetal character in the rest of it. But now you don't end up with something that's got 14 or 15 percent. They can also bleed off some of the juice 
can run that out into a rosé or something like that and increase the skin contact to the juice to fill the body in the wine. They can also ameliorate with a little bit of water. There are places where people, have the, the bridge is so high, they have to, they'll actually try to water it out a little bit. They're also the using water. osmosis in a lot of places. Now, osmosis when you yeah. remove the alcohol after the fact. Yeah. Um, so they pick it right with. This is actually coming from not the hillside, not higher elevation, but closer to the shore where the where they're influenced by the fog coming in off the bay. Yeah. So that fog uh, produces a little bit cooler temperatures and uh, slows the, the growing process a little bit. This is the Sonero Valley. It's the southernmost part of Napa Valley. Where it's, it's, it's black. And this is an 18 as well. So these two from California are the 18, 15 from down in New Zealand, 17 and 17 from Chile and from France, and 18 in the rescue. So, so I like the I like the Mondavi. Um, I'm actually I my bias is probably maybe slightly anti big corporation, um, you know, wine industry influencing um, uh, empires like Mondavi. However, I would say the wine speaks to a very good um, um, comparison to what I would expect out of an nice burgundy. And um, I, I like it a lot. I say that it's the only thing for me that would be missing would be the minerality that you get, that there's a slipperiness in Burgundy that's that's missing from, from the Mondavi. And, and also the Russian River, those two wines stylistically to me were very similar, uh, very good. Um, Have you tried them side by side? All the way around. Nothing like Red Scare. Different experiences. It's interesting too, you talk about the larger wineries. I mean, really, if you're gonna be buying a wine on the shelf in a, in a liquor store in Hampton, uh, New Hampton, New Hampshire, um, the likelihood is you're buying a wine from a pretty large industrial-sized winery. Yes. Um, you, you, can't, you can't convey your wine around the world in, in that kind of depth and breadth uh, without having a pretty large We could probably look up the case production yeah. of each one of these. That would be very interesting to know. Is this a 4,000 case winery and this one a 20,000 case winery? My guess is no. My guess you is know? that all of these are in the 100,000 case or larger size wineries because it's just the, that economy of scale is the only way you compete only in a foreign you market or, or pay that much for that thick bottle. Right. I mean, you're talking about a bottle that you, that's shipped halfway around the world that's available pretty widely across the state liquor store system because if it made it in New Hampton, you know that it's in a lot of other stores because that's one of their smaller stores. So the, the volume of business they have to be doing to, to be able to supply just New Hampshire, um, they've got to be dealing with hundreds of thousands of, of cases. So which is not necessarily a bad thing, but it goes, it, it just reminds me of the importance of making sure you think about when you travel. When you visit a winery that makes 3,000 cases, 4,000 cases, that's not going, that's not going, that's not going anywhere. Right. You're only going to get to try that wine where you go. So I say this all the time, and I think this is really important, is the best wine that's is here. the wine you find within 50 miles or 100 miles of where you live, right. because you're not going to get to try it anywhere else. And, uh, and you're going to find some really wonderful examples. And by the way, 95% of all the wine made in the world fits that category. 95% of all the wine will never end up in New Hampshire because it's too small. They're too small. Now, when you say that 95% of all wine, what you really mean is 95% of all wineries. Yes. Five, yes. Five thousand cases. Or yes. Less. Yes. But 95% of the wine may be created by, by the just a few monsters. Yes. Okay. Yes. 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 95% of the wineries that are producing. Yeah. So I have a suggestion we do right now. Okay. And that is we swirl and smell straight down the line, side by side. No taste, you just smell. Just smell it, think about it, make some comments about it, and, and reflect back on what we had before because these have all evolved now and we've tasted them all. Our mouths have been beat up by all these different flavors. So let's just go side by side swirl and smell and make a make a first comment. Start let's start with Chilean. Okay. We'll start with Chilean. That was the first one that we did. 
Actually, let's start with red scare, oh, and it. then we'll yeah. go through the, the whole line and end up back with red scare. Yeah. So let's start with red scare. Mm. There's that, that wonderful aroma. So it just keeps on giving richness mm. in the nose. What, what's really wonderful, I find, about working with honey, and it's something that I'm looking to expand on and, and infiltrate more and more of the wine with a little bit of honey, is it's sort of, it's like a, a supporting musician. My brother's second trumpet on an orchestra, and second trumpet never gets the limelight, all of the focus, the solos, but that person propels that first trumpet in a way that that first trumpet couldn't happen. It's like some of the great pianists that support Coltrane or something like that. It provides the basis for that sound to come out. So honey sort of elevates and brings out and acts as in that supporting role. So do you think that they should be making their Pinot Noirs with honey? Oh, uh, you know, Chuck, that's a great question. And, and if I lived in an area where we could grow Pinot Noir and, and other classic wine grapes, I would have so much fun taking the twists that we do with our fruit and running it this way. Alright, so Bob is Bob is going down the line over there. Well you gotta I gotta I gotta do it next to each other. So I gotta do it quickly. I, mm. sometimes it's nice I spend time with it, but if you do it quickly, you get immediate you know Visceral kind so of what's, All right, so let's let's go. Chilean. Right. First word. One word for your first impact. Spice. Mint. Oh. Come on. Fruit. Going fast. Fruit. French. French one. Smells like wine. Provence. I guess <laughs> stale. Southern French. I get something stale in that one now. No. All right, New Earthy. Zealand. Earthy is my word there. Oh, what is that smell? Oh, God. Oh. Oh, I don't know what that is. That's, uh, that's a nice. Uh, that's a fruit. It's almost it's almost plastic, like like a creepy crawler plastic, but a good version of that. Mm. There's a good version of that. <laughs> spicy, spicy plastic. It's a spicy yeah, plastic. <laughs> All right, Alexander Valley. I'm so oh. bad at this one one word thing. I can't. Uh, candy. You know, the, the, it's funny. The Sonoma and the Napa are very similar. On the nose. They both have this sort of characteristic. They're both very strawberry. I don't know what that is. But yeah, Alexander is 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 a, a just rich wine grape flavor. Wow. That's that's fun. And at Mondavi, I have to agree with Bob. It goes. It's almost it's emitting, evoking the same sort of sensation for me. With it, just that rich uh, oak. All those things that come together that make a wine smell. Yeah, those, those two are the most similar and together and dissimilar from all the rest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I agree that that the the red scare is more on the the smaller scale foreign sort of format yeah. than the big California yeah Giannier sort of format. Each one of these has got a lot of difference and variability between each one of them. And quite different than, than these guys. Absolutely. So of all of those, just you say one word. So one smell. Which smell jumped, which smell spoke to you? Red scare. Which, which which smell what? Which smell spoke to you? Which which one when you went, oh that's I can't wait to dig in on that one. It's, it's red scare, quite honestly. <laughs> not, not because it's our wine. I love that smell. Right. I love the smell of that wine. So that's and and to, to eliminate any bias, now that we've established that red scare is the best. There's no bias here. No. Now that we've established that red scare is the best, which yeah. one of the other five do you want to know about? On the aroma alone? Yeah. I think I would I would enjoy, oh god, it's 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 in between the Chilean one, which is quite different, and Mandata, believe it or not. Yeah. Those two are the sort I'm going to go with the, the Alexander Valley, Russian River one. Hmm. I'm going to go. Without hands down, the Chilean. The Chilean, yeah, yeah. that's my. It's the Chilean has got a lot of funk. It's it reminds me of those wineries that you can only get right there in the winery, and yet we bought it. You got it at this liquor store around the corner. So that in itself is amazing. Mm. 
And they're it's, doing it's this the least expensive scale. line in this whole lineup. These well, are we just talked about those, too. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I mean, maybe it's a good, so Chalet one's a great value. It is. I mean, they make a really good product that's, that gets here in one case. Well, you also have the advantage, you know, that right now you're buying a wine from Europe. The euro is stronger than the dollar, so you, you're going the other direction. You're buying a wine from South America, the, uh, I don't know, their, their dollar denomination is in each other. But their, their dollar value is way less, so the, the cost to produce this down there compare, cannot compare to what it costs to produce a wine right. in it's Europe. Like when, like when we went to South Africa. Exactly. Yeah, so, so this, you know, in, in South Africa, in South America, that might be quite an expensive wine, but here, because it's competing with our dollar, it's, it's, it's a value. You know what's most shocking to me out of all this is that, that the two California wines, especially the Madaga one, is a little bit reminiscent of some of the fine burgundies you brought back from Burgundy yeah. that we've had in a special dinner. I hate to admit it. Which I, I yeah. <laughs> wow. yeah. I know. You know, we're fighting, fighting this. But it, it, has, it, has, it has some of that, are, you know, it has some of that opulent fruit. Yeah. But that subtle underlying note to it, then you just go, wow, this is less like, the, you know, the, 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 the iron fist and the velvet glove. It's that. It's that. Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I hate to admit it. I hate to admit it, too. So, so speed taste now. Mm -hmm. Go through all of them, you know, one sip of each, all the way down the line, and then... Do we say the first word that comes to our mind when we sip it? No. Just just sip it and move on, and then at the end, just which one are you going to want to take? Starting with things? Red Scare? Yep. In this lineup. Red Scare, yep. Chilean, French, yep. New Zealand, California. Just sip, swallow, move on. All right. See what happens. When you smell it, of course. Tell you one thing though, that red skier is going to linger for a while. Mm -hmm. so don't jump too quickly to the next one. That's a good point. Chuck, any comments from the from the peanut gallery or from our folks out there in the in the world? Wow, that changed. The Chilean wine is just just bananas different. Ah, uh, there's no other aroma like the red scare, authored by Matt Denner. Yes, Matt. Matt appreciates my honesty. Um, Mike Jagers is taking things for credit for things that Wolfgang said. <laughs> and uh, Peanut Gallery is live and active. Well, not that live and active. Although the comments on this don't... They're six hours ahead, ahead, right? So they get yeah, some... Oh, okay. Should be ahead. So what are, are we not making comments as we go through? No. Um, okay. Wait till you get the... Yeah. Scare out of this because we don't want to express any bias, but of the, the ones other than the Red Scare, start out with your first and second choice for what you want to have. For what I want to take home tonight? Yeah. Taking a good sip of each one of them, tasting them, I'm, um, it's easier for me to eliminate stuff. I'm really not too keen on the Jadot. Yep. I really like what's going on in the other two in different ways, yep. but they're not as smooth as the, as the Alexander Valley. That's just got a luscious smoothness, yeah, but nothing compares to the richness of the Mandata. So, so, first choice. Yeah. First choice, not doing the red scare, I would take the Madame one. Second choice. I would take the New Zealand. Check. Wow, that's interesting. So, my main observation in this is that these have all changed 
in the glass since we poured them a while ago. And that is important. It's, 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 I always said, tend to overlook this, how oxygen affects the flavors and the balance and the experience. But it was odd to me. I was able to go through all of this, and they were all different. Well, you can't deny too your taste buds have changed. And my it's taste buds have too, really changed. That I can taste anything right now is astonishing. <laughs> I mean, it's really. I mean, we've we've been we've had quite a. Well, bit that of is a good point. I mean, all of these do have nice flavors. Yeah, good. And they're they're, 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 they're Remember, we're we're talking about them as a whole. I mean, the experience from the second we started to the end is all feeding into our into our conversation. Right. So it's even though you just sipped all of them. You still have a, re a you still remember the experience you had two minutes ago when you were sipping them in a different pattern and you were looking for different noses. But they're changing. They're changing. They're changing, yeah. they're changing sure. Yeah. So, so um, I think they're all fantastic. I mean, this is a uh, great. Which one? This is a great, call? you know, great experience. And Red Scare, notwithstanding, yep. uh, it, it's it is a, sort of in a, in a class of its own relative to this table of, of playing field that we're on here. Um, so, as a matter of uh, taste bud, happiness, Pinot Noir expectation, I'm still sticking with, with my Alexander Valley, uh, Russian River, um, California Pinot Noir. All right, second choice? Uh, well, as, and again, I'm biased against the, the, the man, but yep. I'd have to say that <laughs> I'd have to go with him, that big ass. 800 pound gorilla in the room on uh, yeah. top. So you're going straight to California. Oh, okay. oh, <laughs> oh, wow. oh, I did not expect that. And it's painful. It's painful to you. Oh. Yes, I, I am. I, I, All right, Bob, how about you? So my, my actual favorite was the was the uh, New Zealand, which is a surprise to me. I haven't had a New Zealand. That was, you know, notwithstanding the Red Scare, if I was to pick up the rest of them, yeah. I thought that that had, that had, you know, it's, again, what I like in a wine is, is Something that's different, something that, that sort of breaks the rules a little bit. Right. So, right. Um, it's why I'm, it's why we're creating a winery. No, 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 I know. I, I agree. I, I like the folk. And, uh, and, and the second choice, I have to agree with Chuck that that Alexander Valley uh, Pinot is a surprisingly nice wine. Um, Russian River Valley has always been a favorite region of mine. Anyway, I tend to, to you know, if I if I am going to buy a California wine, I like to to look into the Russian River Valley region. So. So that doesn't surprise me that much, but um, I found that the Chilean wine, sadly, it, it just lost, it, it just fell apart too quickly. It yeah. did have a nice nose, yeah. I like the nose, yeah, but, but, like, but when you taste it, it, it just, yeah. it just yeah. really, that hollowness got even worse, and uh, it just didn't hold it up. It didn't spice enough for it. Yeah, yeah. so, uh, so and, and, uh, and this one, similar experience, it was, it, as it, as it says, it was, it was disappointing. Uh, that, and, was, uh, that was Matt's second tonight. After Red Scare, of course, with the Chateau. But he didn't have the Chilean wine to, to compare in his. Uh, his so he so. had all these wines in his hands? I suspect I suspect he did not, Matt. That would have been. That would have been amazing. You know, he would have had the guy every Pino <laughs> around just to match the five. They, have, they have high expectations, Matt. <laughs> high expectations. <laughs> I'm sure Matt could do it. He could pull it off. He's an amazing guy. But, um, so the, 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 the two strongest wines here, clearly, are, are you know, if, you, if you're separating out the Red Scare, uh, are those two. Now, speaking of these, those two compared to, you know, I guess you could say that the Napa one is in there, too, because it was kind of split on that. But. Well, let's go, let's go now, let's focus on these three. Let's focus on the New Zealand, the Alexander Valley, and the Red Scare. All right. Let's pull so, those three big bombers out. Anybody need a little more? I'll need so two the Alexander. Which glass is that? And, and the red scare. Alexander? This is a great job. I gotta tell you folks, if, if, uh, if you're looking for a new career, the wine industry is a really avenue place. This is, this is where you know, I like really like has been, been an amazing <laughs> Adventure. This really, I think again, for so many things that we did during this pandemic to to focus on, to realign ourselves, this has been one of the most enjoyable twists to the whole thing. You know, you were right out of the gate, Bob, pulling in and using social media to connect us around the world. 
you were interviewing New Hampshire wineries, you were interviewing people in California, you were interviewing people in South Africa. You were going all over the place, bringing things going, and then we started to do this thing. And this started to focus in on what we're doing here and how that compares and really got us to look, look inward at ourselves, what's happened. Step back for a minute and look at ourselves. It, it's, which has really been great. It's been fun, and it's also, you know, it's it's also you know, that opening up to the world. It's, it's it's connected us to new people, and um, I look forward to continuing to do that. So we have opportunities to, to meet other people. In fact, one of the things we talked about is taking this on the road. So once once COVID is kind of right. quieted down a bit, maybe we do in the cellar with Ken Hardcastle and say Ash Fishwine at, at South right. House Meadery. Yeah, we go be great. we go try some of South House's wines and. Uh, some of the other wineries in New Hampshire, who knows? Yeah, so we get, Brian is here, and Ash is here, and I'm here, and we all brought our own wines, and we're sharing them side yeah. by side, and we're talking about it. Talking about winemaking in New Hampshire from different perspectives. Mm -hmm. You know, focused metering. Yeah. A multi-dimensional and focused, you know, cold hardy hybrids. That would just be fantastic. Those sorts of things, I think, would really be great. I and we can I, do them on the third floor, too. I, yes, and I look forward to our In the Cellar with Ken Hardcastle in Argentina. With a uh, uh, let's go, we shot it. Let's go, we shot it. Right? Yeah. We'll bring yeah. the show on the road. Uh, yeah, we'll bring it on the road. Ladies and gentlemen, we will be there. Yes. Yeah. 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 All right. And next All right. Year. So this the, now what we're going to do is we're going to look at these just the notes. Three lines. Get the notes. We we got we got about five minutes. Okay. Actually less than that, but so All right. let's do this quickly. We're on a time limit here. Well, we're trying to keep this at about an hour. Okay. Here we go. We start with a red right skip. Just nose or nose and taste? Red right skip. Oh. Nose and taste. Mmm. Mmm. That's really nice. <laughs> still, after all of this it's wine, spicy it's still spicious. It, it feels more spicy to me now. As a matter of aroma. With, with fruit. Oh, man. That's a nice wine. And you know, this is an important point in the general wine world. A wine that sits in a glass for an hour and continues to improve mm. and show itself, is telling you that this wine is a little young. Yeah. It, that it can live longer in the bottle, and the next time that you open it up a year down the road or two years down the road, it'll start that way and then go somewhere else. Yeah, my, that's interesting, my world just changed. So, well, I'm gonna, I'll, let, I'll finish with this. I'll start with you, Ken. Well, we were just on Red Scare right now. I know, I did You know, just speed through the speed over here. Speed through them. Get them all in your mouth together, see how they compare side by side. I just find, uh, you know, there's, there's a place for both to, to spend time lingering with the wine and studying it and learning from it is one thing. But if you're comparing wines, sometimes it helps to really just, just hit, hit it hard and, and wow. see what happens. Yeah, well, that's great. That's, that's fun. So, I think the New Zealand kicks ass over that Alexander Valley one now. <laughs> I do not. I That's do. funny because I just switched. Did you? Because I started with the New Zealand and then I just had that after these three. And uh, no, I, the Alexander just gets compressed. I think it's got a waveform like this yeah. and the others have got bigger waveforms. They're more interesting. Now remember, we're dialing this into the three most interesting wines of the I know. You didn't, you didn't see them in, in your glass, did you? I didn't. Okay. Because they are very different. Yeah, the New Zealand is very smoky. You can get smoky. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it's got certainly has, has oak and oak in it, but it's got this smoky kind of character. The Alexander Valley. I can smoke on top. I could. I could. The yeah. Alexander Valley is fruit, richness, smoothness, mouthfeel, and finish. Yeah, I, all I, coming I together. Never, I've never been on the. You know, we ended up in Alexander land here, but not that wasn't mine. That was you guys. That was me. Yeah, you know, you're a dog. And it still is. It just, I just had one of those experiences with this, with the Alexander, that it was, it, it went to a place it hadn't been before, this whole tasting, of just fruit coming out that hadn't been there before, and and all kinds, like, it was a story from beginning to end. And, and, and so, so it's interesting. So the, the, my, my feeling was, I kind of did, as Chuck just said, I kind of, when I had them all three like that, 
this one had just it just it, it had more going on. It had it filled my mouth. What's this one? It, the, the Alexander. Okay. It, it's got a bigger. You no, know, it is that that big California. It's a bigger one. It's bigger. I don't get it. Maybe can you have me one of those empty glasses over there? Maybe I'm just my glasses up. But but, it, but honestly, the the red scare is is right there with it. It's got. I, I really enjoy. I think it has a longer finish than the other two. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's, it's clearly a different wine. But what we're, we always aimed for was the experience. And the story I got from the the Alexander uh, Russian River Pinot Noir is the story we always get every day from the Red Skip. And it still uh, uh, had a great mouthfeel, a great fruit, a great balance, and a great finish. It's just different flavors yeah. in the Pinot Noir. That's all, because it's red scare. It's not the same way. But so I say mission accomplished. Absolutely. To quote the famous George H. W. Bush. It's, it's the, I had red scare. I had reverse. Well, that would make Did sense. Really? That would make sense then. So you're so I'm online with the uh, Alexander. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no doubt. It's hard to see the wine is really nice. nice. Well, it is. I thought for sure I was being really religious about it. But even telling the difference between those now yeah. is still hard with a, with a preference. So, so, yeah, that's, that's what you get for sampling. Still, <laughs> sampling six different wines yeah. four or five times in a row within right. one hour. Right. Yeah. I mean, they used to have college entrance routines that would require you to do, you know, 40 shots or whatever it was. Honestly, if we were doing this, if we were really doing this correctly, we would have been spitting out. It's really what? hard in one of these. No, <laughs> clearly. It's also really hard because there's all this nice wine. I have no desire to spit it out. I want to enjoy it. Yeah. But um, honestly, if you're going to experience wine and taste this many wines over a period of an hour, the, right. yeah. the only way to fully appreciate the nuances that are delivered by each of those wines is to spit them out and taste them separately. Right. Um, so, uh, so if you really want to take it seriously, but we we also want to have fun. We also want to enjoy the experience, and we want you to too. So don't don't worry about spitting the wines out. Enjoy them, taste them, and uh, and it'll be. And I've seen this a number of different times. One that was really enjoyable to, to know uh, Richard Leahy visited us many years ago, early on in our friendship, and he helped put on the Eastern Winery Exposition every year and got to connect with us from our wines and, and us giving talks at the, at the expo. And he came to New Hampshire and visited our winery and was staying at your house. And he came to the winery and did a bunch of tastes and, and really loved the Hermitage and the Red Scare and just amazed at what we were doing with his fruit wines and has kept that relationship up from that. But the point is we, we re went over to your house in the evening to have dinner. And before dinner was happening, you went down in your cellar and you brought out some different wines. And Richard took out his little notepad and you brought out some chips and salsa. And he's like, oh, I'm not eating any of this stuff yet. I want to sample these wines and I'm going to take notes about these wines. Then I'll go and eat and drink. And that's really how you develop your palate, develop an understanding of the wine, and an ability to describe wine. Because it's not easy you know, to talk it's about not this easy stuff. At all. I mean, we've been tasting wines together for years, and we still come up. You get smoky, you get earthy, you get, we get different things yeah. every time. Yeah, we're. It's I, 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 to hitchhike on that idea. For me, what this 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 discipline has forced me to do is to pay attention. Right. So. It's focus. Yeah, it's focusing on something that I've never paid attention to in my entire life. And as it turns out, I've been missing a lot. Right? It's so very, it's very this, is like, this is very, this is mindfulness. Zen. This, this, yes. Zen. So I, I would submit that <laughs> really? uh, that the, 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 the wine tasting events are much like a yoga and a mindfulness practice. You know, I've, like seen, I've seen I've seen Maya great. and Leona do yoga, but I've never seen you know, <laughs> eight, eighteen glasses, <laughs> 18 of glasses wine on, the table. on the table. This is down maybe that will happen down down once, once we get to third floor done, <laughs> and we have yoga and wine. But you know, this is a different sort of mindfulness. That's really cool. That we are going to do that. That's great. <laughs> on, on that note, 
I'm not we are at 507. Okay. We've been here for an hour. JB. JB. Hi, JB. JB. Nice to see you, JB. Looking you in the eyes. Cheers. 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 <laughs> Oh, you know. All right. So, we're going to wrap it up. Okay, so, a couple things. So, we'll promo for next week because we, we always get chastised, and we should, because I've not been very responsible about warning people about what we're going to talk about on Monday. So, we, we knew about this today at about what? 2 o'clock. <laughs> you know, it took us a few texts in between to figure that out. But next week, Melanie, our assistant winemaker, has been kind enough to bring some wines from the Biltmore Winery down in North Carolina. And she's going to join us in the same setting, and we're going to try some Biltmore wine. Uh, this is where Melanie got her experience. She spent 16 years down there as the assistant years. winemaker. She knew the winemaker very well, had a really positive experience, and, uh, and, 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 and she had a role in making the wines that are going to be shared next week. Yes, she did. So, uh, so we're bringing some wines up from down south. If you didn't know, the southern area, Virginia, North Carolina, is a really uh, up and coming wine region. It's, it's, uh, it's, you know, it's, it's more than up and coming. It's, it's one of the fastest growing wine regions in the country right now. And uh, it's exciting. They've got some really great stuff coming out of there. So we're gonna try some, some new wines from a, of a region that we haven't explored much. We look forward to the three of us all heading down there. Yeah, head down there maybe someday and yeah. make a trip of it. You know, sure. Visit Richard, that's where yeah. Richard Lane oh, yeah. from, from Charlottesville. Yeah. So, uh, so join us next week where we uh, introduce you to our assistant winemaker, Melanie. We're really excited about that. Try some of the wines that she had a hand in making, and uh, and, uh, and that's it. So are we going to do a beer tasting sometime? We are. That's a great idea. After. <laughs> you know, part of, the reason, part of the reason we hired Melanie, and this, this is an aside, um, we, we took Melanie and, and her partner out to dinner uh, right, on the day we show. interviewed her, and we ordered some pitchers of beer to have. We had pizza and beer at Giuseppe's here in Meredith, and uh, it was a great experience. And we, Ken and I, who are really expert at this, uh, Chuck unfortunately was not there, but uh, I think Melanie drank us under the table. She, she ordered that last <laughs> picture, and you and I looked at each other like, what? <laughs> <laughs> really impressive. That's what we left that meeting <laughs> saying, yeah, we're hiring her. That's it. But she's, she's on board. She's our, she's our guy. That's right. So yeah, I think that's a great idea. Yeah. We should have a beer taste. Yeah, she, she would love that. In a couple weeks, from now to November, we'll schedule that in the head. But next week, we're going to do red wine, or a red and a white. She has a red and a white. From, uh, from North Carolina. Yep. So join us for that. And then a few weeks from now, we'll do a beer tasting. I'm really excited. That's yeah, a great idea. Yeah. We, we could talk, we'll have Twin Barn. Maybe we could get a guest, guest from one of our local well, we'll yeah. yeah. So right. great. Thanks for joining us. We'll uh, we look forward to seeing you next Monday. And, stay safe, uh, stay out, safe there, out there. Yeah. Wear your masks. And, uh, and we'll see you next week. Very good. Bye, everybody.